over the years I've developed this foolproof way, I think it's foolproof way, of achieving a stretched, nice, taut piece of paper um, without any tears. So I'm going to run through the things you need. So obviously uh, you're going to need your watercolour paper. This is a half imperial sheet of Bockingford. Um, the weight of this is uh, 140 pound or 300 GSM. And you will then need a board, a substantial board, one with some thickness to it um, or strength upon which to stretch the paper. The process actually puts the paper under quite a tension. The board also needs to be a little bigger all the way around, um, an inch bigger or 28 millimeters bigger, so that it sits on your board with an even margin around the paper. Now the other component is the tape itself. We need to soak this paper and tape it firmly to our board and the only tape really to use is the old-fashioned gummed tape uh, this is 48 millimeters wide which is just under two inches i guess in old money so it's nice and wide and it's gummed on this side so you wet it with water and I'm a good way through the roll on this because when you buy it it's on a 200 meter roll so it will last you a good long while. So you need some tape, you don't need it but it's nice to have a pair of scissors just to cut the tape and the other bits you're going to need is a sponge to put the uh, water on your tape and some drying is going to be needed before we uh, finish the process. So some kitchen roll and a tea towel completes your um, kit of tools that you're going to need to successfully stretch watercolour paper. Now you don't need to fill your bathtub for this as you can see just to a level where you're going to comfortably be able to put your paper in. So um, I just slide it in and then leave it, not for a massive amount of time. Right, the paper should be uh, nicely saturated now, so just gonna lift it out and drain it off. Right, so I'm placing the wet paper on the board and centering it as uh, near and as quickly as I can. Now the thing is, the water has expanded the fibres in the paper so that it is um, it is swollen up, okay, and the, the paper is really wet. Now the way I do it differs slightly from uh, everybody else at this stage because I found if you put the gummed paper on the edge here, this is dry, this is soaking wet and this is soaking wet, but if you trap the moisture here, this will dry and this will dry before the water under the trapped under the tape dries. And invariably, as this paper dries, it's going to shrink, which is going to give it its stretched uh, a feel. And if it shrinks, it starts to dry and shrink before one of these edges is stuck, then you will have an unstuck edge and it won't be stretched properly. So in order to get round that, I take an ordinary tea towel, which just happens to be half imperial size, uh, which is useful, and just lay it and just very lightly just take off the surface moisture. Okay, it'll make it dry a little bit bigger, but don't dab it too firmly. You're not trying to dry the paper with it. And then, with the kitchen roll, I make a, a ball with the kitchen roll and the area of the paper around the edge that I know is going to be trapped by the gum tape. I'm going to give this a much firmer wipe to make this as dry as I can make it. 
so that it will not, it will dry at a very similar rate to the, to the board and the paper here and it'll be stuck before the paper can produce enough uh, pressure to cause a problem around one of the edges. So now we just um, go across and get the tape ready. Right, now with the uh, gummed side up, I use the sponge. Uh, a wet sponge, nice wet sponge, not a damp sponge. And just loosen the glue along the full length of the strip, making sure it's all uh, wet. And then I'll take this over to the board and then Position the tape half on the board and half on the paper. So you will lose um, about an inch all the way around this. So finally, I give that with the tissue, give that a good pressure, amount of pressure on there. And then I simply repeat that with the other three edges. I can see the paper is uh, already swollen up and is buckling. Now there can be a temptation here to try and flatten that out. Um, don't worry about it. Just leave it. You don't want to put a crease or a mark in this paper while it's wet. So just tape it down and have confidence that it will work. And then um, it's just a question of letting it dry out. So what I do is uh, find an area of, the, of a room that's not going to be disturbed and I just lay them on the floor to dry out. As they dry out, this surface becomes tight. It gets trapped by the tape and it's, it's kind of like a drum skin. Now, when the process is finished, you need to let the paper dry out naturally. Uh, what I do is normally stretch my paper in the evening and it dries out overnight. I leave the board flat. If you prop your board up or stand your board up, the water is like to drain through the paper and it won't stick one edge. So just let it be uh, flat. It will have wrinkles on it, so it'll look as though it might not, might not possibly go flat, but um, it usually does. So at the end of the day, you end up with a very nice panel of watercolour paper, which is a joy to paint on actually, because there's nothing worse on buckled paper and you put a brush mark across and it hits heavily the rise in the paper and makes a dark mark and misses altogether the, the trough in the paper. It makes for much uh, more even brush marks, in my opinion. And uh, also the second benefit of doing this is if your picture eventually becomes uh, something you want to frame. When you put a piece of buckled paper, even if it's slightly buckled under the mount, you'll see that buckle around the edges and it looks not too good, I don't think. So they're the reasons why I make the effort and shrink my watercolour paper. <laughs>